Hello everyone. Ho I hope you enjoyed this uh, cool little animation. Uh, why did I make this animation? I have a very special reason. And the reason is uh, this. This entire uh, uh, tutorial, it's a follow-up to this question that somebody posted uh, in the comment section on uh, one of my videos. Uh, Youth Ninja would like to know if it's possible to make an uh, array modifier uh, inside of geometry nodes and just drop it on something else, like on a monkey. And uh, voila, we have the monkey. And uh, unfortunately, we can't do it directly. We can press the new and then select this one. Or I'm going to show you a little tip. You can go to the modifier of the object that has the modifier you need, and you can drop it on your object. And uh, here you go. Now I can delete the original uh, object. I don't care about it. So I have the monkeys. And um, there is a cool part about this. Uh, I can control, I made the setup to control the instances on the all three axes. Starting with one and whatever we want. And you can see the monkeys are already nicely arranged. Um, they don't intersect. Um, you can scale this as you want. You can even add offset depending on the axis, different for each axis. And of course, you can put this on any object. So let's say we have a torus. Okay. And we do the same trick. We take the modifier and we put it on Taurus. And we can control it separately. Uh, now we can have more uh, on this one. The monkey one stays in one place. It doesn't get uh, disturbed by uh, what we do here. And uh, of course, we can play with the offset as much as we want. And basically, the animation that you saw in uh, at the beginning, it's done by uh, playing with these spacing values. I made this little setup. Uh, these drivers are just, um, well, don't worry about it. It's uh, just a loop made with sign. And uh, this is all very straight. So, yes. Uh, Youth Ninja, you can do this now in Geometry Nodes. And I want to show you how you can uh, make this one happen. Uh, so let's start from a new file. We are not going to need uh, this stuff. So let's delete it. The controller, let's delete that one. Deactivate the camera. We don't need it. We are not going to need this uh, spreadsheet for now. Uh, let's put this one on properties and uh, let's add a cube and start a geometry node 3. Uh, okay, I'm going to pin this one because uh, I want to have access to uh, the inputs. So the way we are going to do this, it's uh, by using a grid and uh, two things before we start. I'm using this shortcut, control A for the search menu, it's a lot easier for me. I put it, so you, when you see uh, Control A on your screen, you'll know why this shortcut is. And the second one is that uh, huge, huge uh, improvement in geometry nodes, from my point of view, that allows to uh, get this effect. And that is, uh, instance point. Uh, before we could uh, just uh, source an object, now we can source geometry. So uh, that means that if we put the inst uh, original geometry from uh, the input point, and uh, as a source we use this grid, we get the cubes. That's the beginning of our uh, uh, Cuboid array. And by the way, we can't, no, we can't use the 
cube node I tried already. The problem with this one is that it's not going to instance points inside, only on the surface. So uh, how can we make it so it will change uh, and uh, adjust the spacing, uh, spacing automatically, uh, regardless of what we do and what we put on it? Well, let's do this. Um, we will recreate the setup from the original file. So let's uh, expose the vertices on a X and Y. We want to control those. And in order to adjust these sizes automatically, um, we will do a little bit of math. First of all, we need a, a bounding box. And the reason is we want to know the size of uh, the geometry that we are instancing. And the way to get this one, it's we separate these vectors. Because uh, we want to do this for all axes, in case that our object is not a cube, like the monkey has different values on uh, the three axes. And we separate the vector. We take the maximum value from uh, the bounding box. And uh, first things first, uh, we have to, uh, okay, I get this all the time. My geometry is disappearing, so I can press home and get it back. Uh, let's do, do it for the x-axis. And uh, because this node, it's giving us half the value, we are going to multiply it by two to get the size of the entire object. That's one part. The second part, uh, let me make some more room here. Put these ones here. If we plug this one directly here, we get something. But uh, as you can see, uh, the geometry is still intersecting. And uh, there is a reason for this. Uh, if we put it on two, it's nice. But uh, if we put three, it starts to intersect. Because we have to do a little bit of extra math and trickery. So let's take this uh, multiply noise node, switch it to subtract. And we want to take the number of vertices and subtract one from them. That will uh, give us a correct spacing when we will do multiply of these two values. So now if we look at this, hey, you can do the first part easily. Okay, let's uh, add um, an offset for this. And uh, the way we can use uh, this offset is um, by uh, adding it to this value. So we have this. Let's switch it to add. Okay. So we have the original value and we add this offset. And now we can control the offset. Okay, let's leave it like 0.1. Now we have to do the same things for the other two axes. I'm gonna pause the video because I don't want to bother you with this repetitive task. Okay, so I added the nodes for the Y. It's uh, exactly the same thing. I exposed uh, the value uh, for the offset. So, uh, this is basically our offset value going here. And uh, we have now a functional grid. So uh, this one is working nicely and we can test it to see if everything is okay. We can add the monkey. Uh, we can put it somewhere, doesn't matter where. And uh, let me switch this to the outliner and copy the modifier to the to them. And uh, sure enough, it's working. 
see we have uh, things nicely here okay let's delete the monkey for now and we go back to this one and let's add the, the third dimension the z dimension so let's add the mesh line uh, we will switch it to endpoints the count we want to expose the count it's the third axis here so uh, this count let's say works z okay and uh, what are we going to do with this one well basically we have to uh, change this value to control the size and also we need another point instance so we are going to instance the geometry that we created on this line and now by controlling these sides we can control the uh, third dimension and of course we have to do this setup again so we can copy these nodes control shift d uh, we want the z value plugged here and uh, we want the offset to go here the third offset and uh, let's rename this one offset z and this will be offset y and offset x okay so now we have the offset and uh, we need uh, the number of words to be put it here and this value has to be plugged in here let's do some uh, more spacing here so we need a combine x y z we will leave this on zero we are just going to use uh, the z value so now we can control the number of instances on the z axis and the offset as well so let's put this on 0.1 0.1 0.1 0 0.1 so this is the base of our cube and uh, here you go this is all very straight now you can do uh, cuboid arrays inside of geometry nodes and uh, you can do whatever you like with, with it i hope you enjoyed this and you will find it useful uh, if you find it useful you can decide to subscribe to my channel and uh, like my videos you can also uh, put comments on uh, this video i would love to know your opinion about uh, my tutorials because i want to improve things for you guys i'm also going to post um, and the cleanup uh, file as a node group on uh, Gumroad, so you can uh, use it for your own projects. That's it for today. Hope to see you in the next tutorial. Until then, have a nice day.